فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم The Sheikh says رحمه الله الحمد لله praise is for Allah the word الحمد لله praise is for who praise is for who Allah تبارك وتعالى which Allah تبارك وتعالى الذي the one الذي the word الذي هي is a نعت للرب الله للرب الحمد لله praise is for the one the one whose virtue who's bestowed upon us الذي the one based on his vast virtue and his vast kindness and generosity what did he do فقاهنا علمنا he taught us praise is to the one الذي this is his characteristics now the check is going to give you the characteristics the one who what due to his vast the الذي the, here means the one to his vast generosity and kindness what did he do فقاهنا he gave us understanding he gave us understanding علمنا الفقه he taught us fiqh بالتفقه he gave us the understanding of fiqh ولذلك it has come as فقها in فقها الذي فقهنا صح in the form of what فعل صحيح the word فعل that صيغة that صيغة of فعل it shows تدريج graduation like when something is done gradually it means when something happens over a period of bit by bit in other words فقاهنا علمنا he taught us the fiqh he came how one time all of it لا لا he taught us bit by bit time over time ولذلك my beloved brothers الفقه لا يأتي بغتة fiqh does not come one time and you don't gain fiqh فجأة once suddenly you don't gain it like that ولا دفعة واحدة Allah you won't just get it at once Fiqh is not something you learn overnight or daytime or weeks or months or years. Something your whole life you will spend inside it. Fiqh is your life, it's your umr. That's what it wants from you. It is not, it is not something that you can take simply and easily. I studied fiqh and I specialize and I know fiqh and I'm very good at it. That's my field. Abadan, la. Fiqh is from the uloom that has no ending to it. Anna Nawazil. Nazila comes, a new contemporary issue occurs, it requires qiyas and it requires uh, understanding and comprehension of it. So fiqh is not one or two, three or four or five years. It's one of the uloom that require yahtaju ila umr. It requires a person's lifespan. That is what it requires. So faqahana, he is the one who what? Who taught us fiqh? أي فهمنا في شريعته. So the question arises, my beloved brothers and sisters, الذي فقهنا the one that gave us fiqh. Should we say فقهنا and fiqh? Remember what did you say? لغة. What did it mean? فهم. That's لغة, right? So do we use the word fiqh here? الذي فقهنا the one who gave us understanding that is and لغة. So that understanding can be anything, it can be science, it can be math, it can be English. Or should we say, الذي فقاهنا, the one that gave us fiqh, يعني فقه الاصطلاعي. معرفة الأحكام الشرعية العملية المكتسبة من أدلتها التفصيلية. Should we take that definition? Why have you chosen that definition over the linguistic definition? لماذا? What context? So we study قواعد الفقهية. And it's more befitting to say that this fiqh here is not the fiqh lughatan. It is fiqh which is istilahi. Are you with me, brothers? And the reason why we said that it's more answer, more befitting for the position here to say that it's fiqh istilahi is so we can get out of the balagha benefit which is bara'atul istihlal. Bara'atul istihlal. Remember when we studied the kitab قواعد الفقية by الشيخ عبد الرحمن ناصر السعدي. What did he say? جامعة المسائل الشواردي. صح؟ 
words, in the beginning of the book, he's giving you understanding of what subject you're going to be studying. Are you with me? Even Muhammad Amir al-San'ani, rahimahullah, in his poem, Qasab al-Sukar, what did he say? He said, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Yusnadu kullu hamdi, ilayhim marfu'an bi ghayri addi, muttasinan, laysa lahum qita'un, ma fihi kathabun, wala wada'u. He said, Alhamdulillah, which I'm, pra I'm praising Allah, a praising that is connected, that is not disconnected, a, a praising that there's no fabricate, a liar not in that chain of, no you see, that is bara'atu istilal. He's trying to tell you in the beginning that you're going to be dealing with sanad and matal. This is balagha, this is eloquency that the Arabs have, which is called bara'atu istihlal. In the beginning of the book, you start getting an understanding that this is going to be about this particular topic. So that's what we're going to take. الَّذِي فَقَّاهَنَا أَيْ فِقْلُ الْإِسْطِلَاحِ So we can have that bara'atu istihlal out of it. يَقُولُهِ said, رَاجِعَ عَفْوِ رَبِّهِ الْعَلِي وَهُوَ أَبُو بَكَرْ سَلِيلُ الْأَهْدَلِي We took that. Alhamdulillah, he prays. Lillahi, it is for Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Alladhi the one. Faqahana, who gave us understanding. And then we said it is what? Fiqh. The fiqh here is what? Fiqh istilahi. It is the technical definition. It is the te technical definition. And then from here, we're not going to learn. We're not going to study here now. I and mean, we're not going to be studying usul al-tafsir. Uh, we're not going to be studying gharib al-hadith. We're not going to be studying aqidah here. We're going to be studying and we're going to be taking fiqh al-shari. Fiqh al-shari. Rather more specific. Because remember we said fiqh is a four, four ways to get to fiqh. Did we not take it last time? Last, last lesson we took it. Four ways in order for a person to have fiqh of the religion is four things they need. The first thing that we said is that the person learns مسائل الجزئية فروع I would say for example a person would study the kitab Zad if he's a Hanbali if he's a Maliki he would study مختصر الخليل uh, if he's a Shafi'i he would study Minhaj if he's a Hanafi مختصر القدوري مثلا uh, if a person isn't that he would study kitab Shawkani رحمه الله تعالى which is uh, الدرر البهية that book is مسائل فرعية whereas then the, then the second way comes, which is what? قواعد الأصولية And we spoke about the kitab تخريج الأصول على الفروع by Zimjani We mentioned that or الورقات, for example These are قواعد أصولية You said أصول الفقه The third one we said which was أحكام حديث الأحكام Like for example بلوغ المرام عمدة الأحكام المحرر المنتقى You study those books which are حديث الأحكام then the fourth one we said, which was what? قواعد الفقهية And this book is an example for it, which is البرائد, الفرائد البهية إذن الذي فقاهنا He taught us, gave us fiqh through قواعد الفقهية to get to fiqh Not through the path of قواعد الأصولية And not through the path of understanding what? Through أحاديث الأحكام And not through مسائل الفرعية لأن القواعد الفقهية it doesn't deal with the other three It's separate from it Does that make sense, brothers? So, Alhamdulillah, he praises to Allah. Alladhi faqahana, he gave us fiqh. So, the, the Shaykh, rahimahullah, he said, after that, uh, faqahana. Ay, allamana, we, spoke, we spoke about what faqahana means, and we chose the definition that it is al-fiqh al istilahi That it means fiqh al istilahi And so, it can be bara'atu istihlal. Then the author went on to say, wali suluki shar'ihi nabbahana. وَلِسُلُوكِ شَرْعِهِ نَبَّهَنَا لِسُلُوكِ The word suluk is to tread on. Suluk, it, it is سَلَكَ بِالْفَتْحَ Are you with me? سَلَكَ بِالْفَتْحَ And it's the, from the verbal noun of the word سَلَكَ You know, لِسُلُوكِ It comes from the word سَلَكَ بِالْفَتْحَ Are you with me brothers? And it is a مَزْدَر It is a what? It is a verbal noun. And it means when you go to something and you tread on it. It means when you, talk, when you walk, when you take something. Now, brothers, pay attention. Salakat comes in two forms. Are you with me, brothers? 
Are you new brothers? There's a salaka which is from the Bible of what? From the Bible of what? Nasara. It's to give victory. And there's also salaka which is what? Babu dakhala. From the, the meaning of dakhala to enter. Now question inshallah ta'ala, which of those two is it? Ayyuhuma awla huna, which one is most, most befitting for us to use here? Okay, dakhala, why? Why have you chosen the khala? Why have you chosen it for? In terms of where the chef tastes it. Which one of those two does he mean salaka? Suluk? Yeah? Uh, yeah, anyone know? Yeah? From the Bible, hey, Nasara. Shari comes out, hey, anyone else? La, pay attention now. No, it's Takhala. And the reason why it is because, pay attention. The word Salaka, Nasara, and Dakhala. Are you in the brothers? The word Salaka, Nasara, is the Mazdar. And salaka is a mazdar, which is a form of fa'ala. Whenever you try to turn that verb and you turn it into the form that it's in, which is suluk, nasara, uh, nasaka, uh, salaka, it became suluk. Nasara doesn't become nusur. Whereas dakhala, dukhul. So nasara, it comes as the word yansuru, nasran, daraba. يضرب ضربا that's the form that it goes as for دخل you say دخل يدخل دخولا does that make sense so it is from the angle of سلوك and look how benefit we took from here right now we just learned صرف انفق صح which of the two so that's why we say سلكا هي السلوك من from the باب of باب دخل دخول that is what it is so ولي سلوك we, we chose the meaning that's, that says a duhul wal intidam is when something goes into something and it's organized. And Allah wa ta'ala made us tread on a path, placed us in it, organized us in it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The suluki shar'ihi. Pay attention, brothers. The word, the word li suluki, the word li is lam harfujar, and suluk is the isi majroor. So we have a jar and we have a, we have a jar and a majroor. These jar and majroor have to be connected to something. So what is it connected to? It is connected to nabahana. The word nabahana means alerted us. Means يعني أيقظنا. Allah تبارك وتعالى awoke us. And he alerted us of. Notified us of it. Are you with me? ولسلوك شرعه To the legislation of Allah سبحانه وتعالى And the word شرع It means what Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala legislates. In this religion, on the tongue of the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Are you with me? So it is what Allah legislated, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will inform us of that, is what shara' means. Like Allah said in Surah Al-Shura, Ayah 13, Shara'a lakum min ad Allah has legislated for you in this religion. Are you with me? Now, question, brothers. Are you with me? So we know what it means. Wali shuru, wali suluki, shar'ihi. Allah placed us inside. He put us into His legislation. Subhanahu wa taala. Shar'ihi, the shara of Allah. Tabarak wa taala. Allah is the legislator. Can we refer to Allah as a shari'? Can we say? Is it permissible to say a shari'? Nas al shari'u. Can we refer, attribute that to Allah? Tabarak wa taala. Say by shari'. Keeping in mind Allah's name subhanahu wa ta'ala and his characteristics are tawqifiyyah. So if we say shari' is mufa'il, we've made Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, we called him, qala shari'u, the shari' said. Sahih? Is it permissible? And can we say it? Now what you need to learn, my brothers, is that it's very important. There's a qa'idah according to the ulama. 
which is, brothers, pay attention. The sifat, the chapter, the, Allah's names, attributes, right? Names, and we have attributes, characteristics, correct? The attributes and the characteristics are more broader than the names. Does that make sense? I mean, Allah has attributes that are not names. Allah has attributes that are not names. Like, for example, the attribute of istiwa. Can you ever call somebody Abdul istiwa? Does that make sense? Nuzul. Allah comes down and he descends. Can you call a person Abdul Nuzul? But it's a characteristics. It's a characteristics. But every single name has a characteristic in it. Every name of Allah, it has what? Characteristics. Allah's names are not mujarrad a'lam. And we took the qa'ida before. A'lamu bi'atibari dalalati ala al-dhat wa usafun bi'atibari dalalati ala al-ma'ani. Pay attention. There's something that's more even broader than the characteristics. It is not even a characteristics of Allah. It is not. So, characteristics are more broader than the names of Allah. And this third one is more broader than the characteristics, which is al-ikhbar, when you're informing about Allah. Are you with me? When you're informing about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, sometimes people say, Allah is wajib al-wujub. Sah? You hear that a lot. Allah is wajib al-wujub. And it's obligatory for Allah to exist. This is not a characteristics. This is not Allah ta'ala's name, but you're informing about Allah. Then a shari' is it is what? Is ikhbar, informing about Allah. It is informing about Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And the qa'id according to the ulama is what? Babu sifati awsa'u min babi al-asma'i wa babu al-ikhbari awsa'u min babi sifati It's a qa'id. That the chapters of the, character, the characteristics of Allah are more broader than the names of Allah. And informing about Allah is more broader than the characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So based on that, we can say, Nasr al-Shari'u. Are you with me, brothers? Sometimes the scholars, they would use the word Shari'u for the Prophet. Are you with me, brothers? That doesn't mean that the Prophet is a legislator. It means he is informing us of that which Allah has legislated. Are you with me, brothers? He is what? He is informing us of what Allah has legislated subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِسُلُوكِ شَرْعِهِ And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He has what? On the path, the, the, the path He has placed us in. This is praise to Him. All of this is hamd for Him, praise for Him. That He has placed us inside His legislation. That Allah's legislation is what governs us. <coughs> That Allah wa ta'ala has placed us. Nabbahana. Nabbahana here means a qadana. He awoke us. Awoke us from what, brothers? He woke us from ignorance that we were in. He awoke us up from the misguidance and the confusion that we were in. He brought us to what? He brought us to guidance. A nabbahana means here a hadana. He guided us. He Allah wa ta'ala guided us. And as you all are aware of, the guidance are of Two types. Hidayah, which is Hidayah to Tawfiq. And the second one, which is Hidayah to Irshad. Hidayah to Tawfiq wa Dalala. Hidayah to Tawfiq wa Dalala is the guidance which. Hidayah to Tawfiq. It means that Allah wa Ta'ala places the haqq inside you. That the truth enters your heart. That is what Allah has negated from the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah negated that from him. And there is nobody who can ever do that. No one can take the guidance and put it into the people's hearts. That is something Allah is the only one who can do. And that is the one Allah negated from the Prophet. Muhammad, you cannot guide. Sallallahu alayhi wasalam. You cannot guide the person you love. You cannot guide the person you love. But Allah can guide whoever He wills. So here we find Allah negating subhanahu wa ta'ala guidance from the Prophet. You can't guide. The guidance that's been negated from Him is the hidayah to tawfiq. It's to take the haqq and the truth and to place it in the heart of His uncle Abu Talib. And that's who the ayah came down on. 
to take the truth and to place it into his heart, that's something you can't do. It's for me. Only I, Allah, can do it. The second one, which is the one Allah affirmed for the Prophet, Allah affirmed it for the Prophet, which is وَكَذَلِكَ أُوحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ رُوحًا مِنْ أَمْرِنَا مَا كُنْتَ تَدْرِي مَا الْكِتَابُ وَلَا الْإِيمَانِ وَلَكِنْ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُورًا نَهْدِي بِهِ مَنْ نَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا وَإِنَّكَ لَتَهْدِي إِلَى صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ And O oh, you Muhammad, you guide to the straight path. <coughs> so Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is affirming the, for the Prophet what? He's affirming for the Prophet guidance. You guide. The guidance that has been affirmed for the Prophet is what? <coughs> the guidance that's been affirmed for the Prophet is that he shows the path. He shows the, he shows the path that you know where to go and the road you need to take. When the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I have left you upon a path which is clear. It is white. There's no darkness in this. Layluha kanahariha. It's night, that road. When night comes, there's no such thing as a night. It's daytime. Then the Prophet said, La yazigu anha illa harik. No one goes lost and got that, that path. No one goes off it and turns away from it except the person who is destroyed. Lidharika, the Prophet ﷺ was a hadi. He was a guider in showing the path. And that's not only something for him. That is a path that every single person takes who's on the prophetic path. There's a fact that I took while I was away uh, right now uh, in Egypt was the Prophet ﷺ, hadith of Usama ibn Zayd, and Hadith Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ stood up and he went on a utub min a'ta min Medina. He went on a, a, a high place. <coughs> you see, maybe a, uh, you know, a, a, a small mountain, a hill. And the Prophet ﷺ looked at Medina and he said, Inni ara al fitan, inni ara al fitan khilala buyutikum kamawaqi al qatar. I see the fitna entering into your houses. Just like when the rain comes, the way it drops, I to drop places that it hits. So that way I can see every place that the fitna is going to enter. The Prophet said that. The scholars, they said, anybody who takes from the prophetic sunnah, from the Prophet's path, and studies the sunnah of the Prophet, and is really close to the sunnah, has a portion of seeing the fitna like that. There's a portion of seeing the fitna like that. al-Qatar. And this is where the kalam of Ibn Taymiyyah meant by the da'alim and the scholar yara al-fitan He sees the fitan qabla wuqu'iha before it happens. Whereas the jahil, the ignorant one, he sees the fitna after it turns its back and it goes. He was like, oh no. Not while it's there, not while it's happening. Once it's gone and what had happened has happened, he goes, you know what? All this time we were in fitna. He doesn't realize. And then that's why the Prophet ﷺ's path is what gives you insight. You can see things. And if the person is dark and doesn't see that light, that white path, he can't see it. And he deviates, he's a halik, he can't see anything. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, إِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَبَصَارُ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ It is not the eyes that become blind. Because the road, remember, is white. It's the heart that goes dark. The person can't even see the most uh, the things that are right in front of them, it becomes unclear to them. And the poet he said, It is not befitting for the mind. If we have to argue about the daytime, the sun that's out there, everyone can see. You are now questioning the sun that's out there. That is not befitting for the mind. When something goes that low and it becomes that that pathetic, a discussion becomes that pathetic, it's not befitting to be discussed anymore. And that is exactly the atheist. The atheist exactly that's what's become. The arguments and the discussions with them has become, it has become things that, it's like the daytime. It's things that you could, you can see. Like there's a li another line of poetry that the scholars, they said. They said, إِذَا لَمْ يَكُلْ لِلْمَرْءِ عَيْنٌ صَحِيحَةٌ If a person doesn't have eyes which are hell, good eyes, Eyesight so you can see properly. Don't be amazed and shocked if the daytime becomes for him dark. In other words, if a person is blind, it's pitch black. 
you see وَمَنْ يَتَّبِعْ and anyone who follows لِهَوَاهُ his whims and desires أَعْمَى بَصِيرَةُ he will lose his insight so wallahi pay attention this eye if you ask those who deal with eyes and huh, doctors who specialize in the eyes they will tell you the retina or what not the pupil that I, these are the things that gives you light and this is what makes you see and this is what makes you doesn't see without those they say without those things you can't see the hidayah <coughs> the guidance is like that for you to see things the thing that can get rid of you not seeing is hawa. Just like your eye. If one part is a particular part, I don't know what it is. Doctors know it. That if a person's eye get damaged from, they will say, they'll say to the person, there's nothing to be done for you. Surgeries and nothing will change it. This is just critical. It's gone. You're full blind now. Other times, they can, they can bring things back. Some places in Africa, they place fire on the side of the person's temple and then the eyes come back. You see? They fix it like that. Some people are like that when it comes to guidance. They are blind. The desire, the hawa has blinded them fully. They can't see. The things that a normal ami, ami, a person of normal desire, doesn't matter. He will say, well, I can see it. A person you think is of knowledge of caliber sometimes may not see that. So it's important that it is the guidance and the prophetic sunnah is fully looked at. And then the sheikh is praising Allah wa ta'ala for bringing to us and guiding us. And a person, wallahi, my brothers, a lot of the people have hidayah to irshad. You come up to him and you say, Akhi, you want to seek knowledge? He says, yes. Okay, I'm going to guide you to the path to take. Follow this methodology. Wake up, do this. After that, do this. After that, do this. Do this, do this. And you, uh, a schedule is given to that balib, a, that student. And he's told to take that and follow it. So he has the irshad, the, gui- the, the, the physical guidance of what to do, what not to do, what to stay away from. A lot of people know it. Sahih. How many times have we said the call of Imam Shafi'i? أَخِي لَن تَنَالَ الْعِلْمَ إِلَّا بِسِتَّةٍ سَأُنْبِيكَ عَنْ تَفْصِيلِهَا بِبَيَانٍ ذَكَاءٌ وَحِرْصٌ وَاجْتِهَادٌ وَبُلْغَةٌ وَصُحْبَةُ أُسْتَادٍ وَطُولَ زَمَانٍ Six things. Shafi'i said, if you have these six things, you can learn. How many people know those six, six points? Are you with me? They have it, they understand it, they know it. But ma'adhalik, they still can't learn it. It's because hidayah to tawfiq is missing here. And how do you gain that one? The one that gives you the schedule and the timetable is needed. But also the other one is needed, which is the tawfiq. This is what comes from dua. كَانُوا قَلِيلًا مِنَ اللَّيْلِ مَا يَهْجَعُونَ وَبِلْ أَسْحَارِهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ Little Allah says, do they sleep at night? And at, you see, and there were ones, ashar, meaning at the times when the people are sleeping, they are asking for forgiveness. They are praying. And this is where Imam Ahmed got upset with the student who came and visited him. And he came to him, Ahmed said to him, when he saw the water outside his house, he brought water for him and he left it there. And Imam Ahmed went and he prayed his qiyam and he did what he did. And he came back to give him another water for fajr this time. So when he saw he, that he hadn't used the previous water, he said, A student of knowledge, and he has no portion of the night. So the hidayah to tawfiq, which is, Ya Allah, this one no one can give you. No angel that is closer to Allah can't give it to you. No prophet can even give you this one. Which is the one that Allah places in your heart, that tawfiq. That one comes with dua. That comes with a tadarru ila Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. That one comes with al ibtiadu anil ma'asi. Stay away from sins. Stay away from that which Allah has prohibited. And Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah came to his Shaykh Waqi' ibn Jarrah al Ru'asi. And he said to him, Shakotu ila Waqi' ibn Su'i hifdi far shaddani ila tarki al ma'asi. Waqali inna al ilma nurun wa nurullah ila yuda ali asi. He guided him, stay away from sins. He died to tawfiq. That one, my brothers, is what comes with, it comes with Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. So the Shaykh rahimahullah, he means both. That you guided us uh, with what? Showing us the path. And showing us how to get things. And also what? Also you place that in our hearts. You've placed it what? In our, in our hearts. <coughs>